Meanwhile, my friend, John Hayward from Breitbart.com, the author of Dr. Zero Year One, is back with us in the new year to talk about all things political as we roll forward. And, John, i got to tell you, I give the president an A-plus for the way he has handled this. He's done an expert job on this so far. What are your thoughts about it? Oh, absolutely. And, and this is a gigantic win for him. If this really is the end, if, as Iran said, they, they issued a, a blustery, belligerent statement that said, this is the end of our retaliation. Now, you better not do anything to us or we'll just destroy you and blah, blah, blah. You know, the usual crap from them. If this is really the end, Trump flat out humiliated Iran. He killed their number two guy, the indispensable head of their dirty tricks force, the guy who's in charge of creating and coordinating all these Iranian proxy terrorist forces and militia across the, the Middle East. East, and the number one guy in those militias in Iraq in a single airstrike. And Iran's response was to shoot 15 missiles, four of them blow up in flight, and the other 11 fall harmlessly into the desert. This is the worst defeat I think has ever been inflicted on Iran, maybe in its history. I mean, you got to go back to the 300, beating the heck out of the Persians to, you know, get the, them getting pants as badly as this. It's an incredible victory for Donald Trump. And the Democratic Party utterly humiliated itself last night. Nancy Pelosi shrieking uselessly, helpless like a scared child whining that this is all Trump's fault for escalating and, and annoying the Iranians. The, the other comments a lot of Democrats made, I would give Joe Biden some credit. I think he had a good statement. You know, that that was well said. But the rest of them, I mean, just they, they should just end the election now. I, I can't imagine any American would be crazy enough to put them in power after this. Well, and then when you saw how their media responded, MSNBC was using the stats from Iran saying that 30 U.S. has died. And uh, Lawrence O'Donnell was on there saying, Trump wagged the dog. Ha, ha, ha. Now the dog dog is wagging Trump. Ha, ha, ha. And it went on and on from the uh, American left yesterday where you had uh, the statement from Nancy you just talked about. Michael Moore said Trump will use any form of attack to escalate the war he has started. Rob Reiner says we're led into another disastrous war by a lying, ignorant fool. God help us. Stephen King saying Trump did all this. This is all Donald Trump's fault. Retreat if you agree. And on and on it went. Uh, ben Rhodes, the guy who negotiated the uh, terrible Iran deal for Barack Obama, uh, he said uh, that this did not need to happen, that we could have just, you know, let them go and let bygones be bygones. Another side of this I'm curious from you, too, um, John, is um, do you believe they missed on purpose? Some of the media in America is saying, well, they missed on purpose so that they could say to their people, you know, we stood up to the infidels. We, you know, we took out 30 of their guys, which is a lie. It's not true. But that's what they're telling their people. Or is this maybe the best they got? And all this hype about how great they are and what a military might they are, and we better be afraid of Iran, and Iran's going to take us out, and this is World War III and all that. Maybe they're not as great as the American media has been telling us. Well, I think there, there's a lot of truth to that. You can't trust anything the American media says about Iran. They've proven that. You know, and as for They're the on their Iranian side. Too. They're on the Iranian side. Yeah, and they also just take their content without question, as right. we saw with MSNBC. When the Iranian propaganda says something, the U.S. media replays it. NBC News spent last night showing Soleimani's funeral while all this wow. was going on, like live footage, you know, for Americans that really want to see Soleimani. I mean, come on. On. So, yeah, you know, that you can't trust the media. And as for these gibbering lunatics like the lefty celebrities you were quoting earlier, I'd like to put every one of those losers in a room with the American who was murdered by Iraq when their proxy forces attacked one of our bases with rockets last week. And you repeat all that crap to their face. Right. I dare you. I double dog dare you. I triple dog dare you. You guys are millionaires. Fly out to the family of that guy who died, and you repeat all that giving insanity into their faces and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, yeah, and I've been talking about this this morning as well, the president has a, another victory on his hands here. The U.S. trade deficit has plunged to a more than three-year low and on track for its first annual decline since 2013, and China is on their way to the United States. They'll be here January 13th with paper and pen in hand to sign a trade deal with the United States. When everybody was saying Trump has no idea what he's doing with the economy, he has no business taking on China, he has brought China to the table. Our exports are up, our imports are down. He's balancing the trade deficit as well. He's doing a great job. And like you said earlier, just go ahead and have the election now. 
Yeah, and, and also an underreported story for Trump is that he's repatriated a lot of capital that had moved yeah. overseas, a really huge amount of it. He's not getting enough credit for doing that. This is going to go into the election as, as probably a big win for Trump, assuming this all happens and the trade deal gets signed. It takes a bit longer for these things to really shake out and for their effects to be felt. So I don't know if we'll really know the ultimate success of a new trade deal until after the election, but you know how politics works. So we're going into the election. It's going to be all about that they signed the deal, they got it. I would imagine the Democrats are going to try to dirty it up and sure. claim it wasn't that great or whatever they're going to do. It's not going to work. That's the, the fundamental dynamic of this election. The American people understand what's been done here. They can look at the, at the unemployment being wiped out. They can look at unprecedented levels of GDP growth, and they know the Democrats said all that was impossible. They literally couldn't conceive of America having an economy like the one Trump has delivered. The economy is going to be all in Trump's corner. They're going to have to hit him on something else, and of course you know they're going to try. Yeah, we have the tape of them saying, that maybe, and especially Barack Obama saying there's no magic wand. The economy is what it is. You're not going to bring those jobs back. Finally and quickly here, John, what about impeachment? Uh, Mitch McConnell said yesterday, I have the votes to go ahead and begin this trial regardless of what a uh, little crybaby Chuck Schumer's got to say. What are your thoughts? I think he will. I, American people were obviously tired of this. They, they've turned completely against impeachment. They know it's a partisan sham. So they want this to be over. A lot of people came back out of the vacation, just ordinary people saying, what, you guys are still talking about this? And with the crisis going on in Iran, you know, with everything that's happening overseas, they, they look worse and worse with every passing day on the Democratic side. So I don't think a lot of Democrats are going to object too much when McConnell kills this and just puts it out of, out of their misery. I think they wanted to keep those articles of impeachment in limbo for as long as possible, mm -hmm. maybe forever. They were never going to really send them over and do this if, if they had their say, yep. and McConnell's force in their hand. And a lot of Democrats are saying that yesterday, that they, the game is up. I agree a million percent. Uh, great to have you back in the new year. I always look forward to our visits. John, I appreciate it very much, and we'll be reading you at Breitbart.com. Thank you, my friend. Thanks very much for having me. That is John Hayward from Breitbart.com, the author of Dr. Zero, Year One.